those who seek to do you the most harm are not always what we expect. Some monsters wear brilliant fraternity boy smiles. Some monsters are born into privilege. Three brothers born in one of the most affluent regions of Italy are more evil, sinister, and diabolical than your worst nightmare. From health shakes to coffee to cryptocurrency to saving the planet, the notorious Steinkiller brothers produced the top team in the most nefarious MLM scheme in history. Meet Aaron, Christian, and Stefan Steinkiller. This is their story. Not, not, no time. Hey there, cats and kittens. My name is Alonda Carter, and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM, that's anti-multi-level marketing content. And I also, on occasion, from time to time, dip my toes into true crime. But if you think about it, isn't multi-level marketing criminal? Well, definitely, in the case of the video that you're about to watch, there are definitely some intertwines of multi-level marketing and criminal elements. This is the second video in my Notorious series. The first video was about Igor E. Alberts, which you may or may not know who he is. If you're in the U.S., you probably don't. If you're in the U.S., you probably haven't heard of the Steinkiller brothers. But today, I'm going to tell you their story. One of the things that I'm going to tell you is, if you're someone who watches anti-multi-level marketing content, you might think you know MLM. I know I did. But... All of this that I'm doing in the Notorious series, it's much darker and much deeper and more twisted than anything else I've come across. Now, what I'm doing is looking at the history of all of these people who are at the top of one coin right before the leader vanished. And they kind of hung around a little while, but overall, they just all scattered. The contents of this video is based on my research, my opinions, and my experience in multi-level marketing. Please be kind to each other in the comment section and be kind to me. What I'm doing is shining a light on something that I find to be highly problematic. Before I get rolling, I do want to say since I'm American, there's a really good chance that I am not going to say these names correctly. So I apologize in advance, just, you know, just kind of roll with what I'm doing. And if you hear some weird sounds, there's some stuff going on outside. And, you know, what can I say? The fabulous world of being a content creator here on YouTube. Aaron, Christian, and Stefan Steinkiller are from the autonomous northern Italian province of South Tyrol. Three main languages are spoken in this area, German, Italian, and Latin. It is one of the wealthiest Italian provinces. I would presume the brothers three did not grow up in poverty given their origins. Aaron Steinkiller is the eldest of the brothers. He was born in 1977. He graduated from a secondary school and he and his partner have three children. Christian, the middle brother, was born a year later in 1977. Christian is trained as a land surveyor and attended a polytechnic college. He is married and has two children. The baby of the family is Stefan. He was born in 1986. Stefan attended secondary school. He worked as a salesman at a hiking and climbing store. A personal acquaintance who is not identified is said to have introduced the brothers to the multi-level marketing or direct sales industry in August of 1999. In 1999, Aaron was 21 and he joined Herbalife a direct sales company from the U.S. He sold weight loss shakes and became quite the app salesman. In the 90s, Italy relied not on big business, but rather small to middle-sized family businesses. 1999 was also the year Italy adopted the euro, and its debt to GDP rose significantly. According to an article by The Atlantic, one thing has always seemed to impact Italy's growth, governance. Beyond that is also corruption of the underground economy. Allegedly, 15% of Italy's economy centers around the black market. Given the desire to prosper, to me, it's no wonder that the brothers became interested in direct sales. After playing with the numbers, the three said yes to the opportunity. Initially, this was just a secondary income for them, but after being in direct sales for two years, They all went at it full time. 
Allegedly, the brothers wanted to expand their weight loss endeavor to the Dominican Republic, so Christian traveled there. According to what I can piece together, this is when Organa Gold's coffee enters their life. Organa Gold is a coffee and tea MLM that was founded in 2008 by Bernardo Chu, who is from the Philippines. Allegedly, the person who turned Christian onto this coffee had never been in network marketing before, but managed to create a team of 5,000. At this time, Christian and his brothers had not been in touch really, but Christian saw that this was an idea that he and his brothers could join up and build a team. Not totally convinced, Aaron decided to fly to Organa Gold's Ganoderma Plantation located in Malaysia. Ganoderma is an ingredient used in Organa Gold products that supposedly helps people become healthier beginning at the cellular level. Adherents claim it will boost immunity, fights fatigue, improves memory, increases stamina, lowers cholesterol, reduces inflammation, relieves stress, and reverses the aging process. Since this is an ingredient in the coffee and tea produced by Organa Gold, their products are touted as being healthy coffee and tea. Aaron's flight to Malaysia included a black businessman by the name of Holton Bugs. Holton may reappear in this series when I fully cover Organa Gold. The two began to chat and exchange business cards. One day, Aaron called Holton just to say hi, and that's when he discovered Holton was involved with a coffee business, and you guessed it, that business was Organa Gold. As a matter of fact, at this time, Holton was the top earner for Organa Gold. Apparently, at this time, Organa Gold had not yet infiltrated into Europe but that was about to change. On January 2nd of 2010, Christian Steinkiller signed up under Bugs as the European representative for Organa Gold. At this time in the EU, there were 27 member states, which included about 500 million residents, plenty of people for the brothers to target into the overall scheme. The Steinkiller brothers built a very large five-digit team of Organa Gold distributors. They were in the big league of direct sales. This type of business structure works for those who have a very large network, and the brothers did. In 2013, the combined monthly earnings of the brothers was between $300,000 to $500,000. This trio played on their individual strengths. For instance, Christian was the one who tended to speak to the Spanish-speaking market. Aaron became the architect. He developed detailed work plans, and Stefan was in charge of number crunching. The brothers believed that the coffee product combined with network marketing was their key to massive success, and for them it was. With dollar signs in their eyes and contacts galore, these three went on to earn massively. In February of 2012, the estimated combined monthly earnings for the brothers is $120,000 per month. By April of 2012, Aaron was earning $145,000 per month. And by October of 2012, Christian started earning roughly $337,000 per month. Both Christian and Aaron reached the rank of Organa Gold Crown Diamond by 2013. It is estimated that the Steinkiller brothers pulled in some $300,000 to $500,000 per month. Crown Diamond is one of the top ranks for Organa Gold, and there were not many who had achieved this level. Allegedly, those who reached the rank of Diamond and above did not believe that the Organa Gold compensation plan would yield long-term wealth. One former Blue Diamond stated, the compensation plan is a mess in the long term. It's zero organic volume. You have to keep enrolling all the time and pushing volume from event to event if you want to keep making money. There is no actual organic volume. Another top ranking distributor claimed the compensation plan pays too many people to less and too few people too much. Once the Steinkiller brothers realized that the qualifications they needed to continue to being paid so much money were extremely high, they realized it would be really difficult to maintain. So they crafted an exit plan. This is one reason multi-level marketing is so tricky and so few can sustain it. 
Overall, you must continue recruiting people in at the bottom and convince them that they too can rise to the top. Furthermore, this concept is interlaced with personal development, relying heavily upon developing the right mindset. Focusing on mindset is a great distraction from the truth. When you enter the MLM, you become but one cog in the wheel, and your job is to believe, buy product, and recruit others to do the same. The brothers resigned from Organa Gold in September of 2014. In October of 2014, Stefan Lykak and the Steinkiller brothers launched Conlingus, which expanded to the U.S., Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and Asia with one simple idea, share wealth. This MLM's product line centered around marketing material for a penny auction platform. It offered two affiliate memberships and the ability to recruit others to do the same. The more someone pays to join, the greater the commission. Around this time, the brothers also launched a team website, OneDream.com. This team was destined to be the future top distributor home of OneCoin. On February 5th of 2015, Conlingus froze their payouts to restructure the company over the next 30 to 60 days. The company memo alleges that Conlingus came under attack by organized crime families. Coincidentally, Ruzsa Ignatova launched OneCoin during 2014. However, the path of Ignatova and the brothers would not occur until 2015. In early 2015, Aaron Steinkiller met Ruzsa. On April 1st of 2015, Conlingus announced it had aligned with One Life, One Coin. Allegedly, Aaron released a statement stating the two companies found a strategic fit together and they would both be able to expand their businesses. When Ruzsa Ignatova met the brothers, she instantly saw their potential. And as part of their dedicated leadership, the Steinkiller brothers started driving relevant digital projects for the network, such as mobile app builder, or MAB. MAB was not a creation by Ruzsa. It was owned by Tiger App Creator. OneCoin, though, modified it slightly and then resold it. At this point, Ruzsa had her software ready to launch OneCoin. What she didn't have was that vast network to push it into the world. Enter the Steinkiller brothers. They had the network, and they were ready to expand. And by now, the brothers knew how direct sales worked. And all they had to do was pivot the dream and pitch a new product, OneCoin. The Steinkiller brothers were paid 500,000 euros to bring over their entire network to OneCoin. This is where people like Igor E. Alberts comes in. The massive One Dream team was set to become the voice of Ruja and bring the illusion of OneCoin to the world. Unencumbered by the overall Ponzi setup of OneCoin, the brothers pitched the opportunity to many leaders, telling them that they could make 40 to 50% commission. You can see how the unscrupulous sort would have dollar signs in their eyes and no regard for anyone or anything other than how to line their own pockets. To sweeten the deal, so to speak, the brothers claimed they made 1.8 million euros before OneCoin even launched. By December of 2015, after joining OneCoin, the Steinkiller brothers earned $900,000 per month. Other members of the One Dream team also earned a lot of money, including Anton Federspiel, $350,000, Mihal Petrov, $300,000, Ralph Pollock, $225,000, Jose Gordo, $150,000, UA Henschel, $150,000. Thomas Hempe, $150,000. Thomas Klugik, $105,000. Hans Jorg Oberach, $100,000. Oh, I know I did not say those names right. And six months later, in June of 2016, the brothers had earned $1.8 million by promoting OneCoin. Ruzsa Ignatova vanished October 25th, 2017. I am building my series Notorious to examine One Life, One Coin. For now, those nuances of her story are out of scope. People who built massive downlines with the promise of riches from One Coin 
became a bit skittish after she disappeared. Like cockroaches who scatter when the light comes on in a dark room, the Steinkiller brothers exited stage left after one coin had gone public and a third party actually started to accept the cryptocurrency, which allegedly kept rising in value. P.S. The value was not set by supply and demand. Rather, it was the company itself who determined the value. The supposed blockchain behind this currency did not exist. There was no blockchain and hence no crypto coins either. Ted Newton, the man behind Business for Home and promoting these so-called top earners of one coin, claimed that the brothers were making $2.5 million each month. So why leave? The money is good. What would cause this trio to abandon ship? Well, let's face it, since Ruja disappeared, there had been a bit of a light shining on one coin, and that light is not something I think the brothers wanted to suddenly shine on them. According to an article published by the Gerlach Report on May 10th of 2019, the three brothers used fake passports and fled to Dubai. Like all good MLMers at the top of the game, anyone who speaks out against them They try to silence those, quote, haters. In fact, there were a string of arrests in India and a flurry of regulatory action worldwide. All this action may have given the brothers and other top earners pause. Not long after the brothers threw out their OneCoin bags with the claim that they were moving on from MLM, the Italian authorities fined OneCoin $2.5 million and banned OneCoin, asserting the company to be a pyramid scheme. The Steinkiller brothers had built a worldwide empire that spanned across 60 countries. They reached people of all ages, races, and cultures. Allegedly, the Steinkillers decided to step away from one coin and embark on their own adventure that was not multi-level marketing. The brothers handed over their downline to Stefan Liebach. After the brothers slipped into the dark and away from one coin, their once flourishing one dream team either collapsed or Liebach was just not cut out for the job of keeping thousands of people chasing their tails and after the dream. Not sure which. Liebeck did slink back into the MLM world and began promoting Cloud Horizon, created by Frank Ricketts, another person connected to OneCoin. Ricketts was also given the status of Black Diamond in OneCoin. Frank had another MLM, and it is said that in early 2016, he sold off his list of investors to OneCoin. Is it coincidence that the brothers stepped aside shortly after Spain's Jose Gordo joined the One Dream Team downline for One Life OneCoin? Jose had close to 10 years in MLM prior to becoming part of OneCoin. By May of 2017, allegedly, he was earning around $720,000 per month as a One Life OneCoin distributor. The brothers' next foray was with the Polish company FutureNet, which was established in 2012. And like One Coin One Life, it launched in 2014 by Stefan Morgenstein and Roman Zeman. In 2019, behind MLM confirmed, FutureNet was a hybrid Ponzi pyramid scheme centered around travel products such as ebooks, online tutorials, cryptocurrency, games, apps, travel, and a coin called FutureCoin. In 2019, Poland's Office of Competition and Consumer Protection issued a warning that FutureNet may be a pyramid scheme. The year before, at a FutureNet event, the Brothers Three began promoting a new product called Planet Guardians. This was supposedly a program to protect our planet specifically against deforestation. The latest business venture the Brothers are involved in is called Planet Impact, based out of the smart city Malta. It costs 60 euros to join. Allegedly, like other MLMs that I have covered, it tries to make it look like the opportunity is affiliate marketing. It's not. Once again, the brothers use the multi-level marketing model. You can receive a digital product. Once again, something non-physical, and it's called the Academy. The Academy allegedly is a training library to help improve various skills, such as web and graphic design, business, marketing, entrepreneurship, photo, and film. Other topics include personal growth, wellness, diet, and improving relationships. Much of this sounds eerily similar to the whole courses that were offered by OneCoin. To me, it sounds like the trio have continued to promote education as the product that will save the world. In essence, you join in your job is to get others to also purchase 
these educational packages. A uni level pay structure is used with the goal of receiving residual income. Those that you recruit become your level one. There are a total of 14 levels and the residual commission is anywhere from eight to 1% depending on the level. Now, following typical MLM rules to be eligible for commission, you must remain active, which means you pay your 60 euros each month and you must sell to Academy subscriptions. Every month to be paid, you are required to recruit two people. Do you see the problem? I sure do. Willy-nilly courses that you buy and then sell to others over and over and over, and they do the same. It seems that the brothers have repackaged everything they learned over the years and now claim to be concerned about our planet. Rest assured, their only concern is lining their pockets, not yours, not mine, and not saving the world. All of that is just a ruse. Their Instagram account, which has over 24,000 followers, however, has very, very little like-comment ratio. And to me, that quickly reveals there's no real engagement. Heck, I have under 2,000 followers on Instagram, and I get more engagement than they do. Their posts on Instagram mirror that of Facebook. There is nothing about their social media presence that is authentic. I would guess there is nothing about any of them that is authentic either. Furthermore, there are allegations that the brothers have mafia connections. Now, honestly, does it surprise you that an industry and men who have been involved with other schemes have such ties? According to the Gerlach Report, an agency that has investigated the trio has an arrest warrant out against the brothers. Additionally, there are unconfirmed reports that the public prosecutor in the capital Bolzona of South Tyrol, where the brothers are from, have previously brought criminal charges against them. Allegedly, anyone who speaks out against the Steinkiller brothers and one coin are added to a death list. This list is managed by Hans-Jörg Oberich, a top producer for the brothers and their one coin, one dream team. Oberoch supposedly is the one in charge of taking care of anyone that steps out of line. Let me be clear, it's known that OneCoin has ties with organized crime, including that in Bulgaria and Russia. And I don't think it stops there. After all, the top OneCoin agents have very large networks and speak many languages. To me, it would make sense to station people who have questionable ethics and morals all around the world to bilk anyone and everyone out of what money they have. These front men can manipulate the masses into believing the dream, and all the while, money is siphoned across the globe to various criminal gangs, allegedly. I assert Ruja Ignatova recruited professional multi-level marketing players systematically and methodically for those who are above her. She is not where this stops. The hallmark of multi-level marketing is deception. As long as there are people who appear to be wealthy based off of whatever the company is promoting, whatever product there is, there will be vulnerable people who believe in the dream. It's an illusion. In my opinion, it is perhaps the most sinister element we face on our planet because there are so many different strands and I have not touched on all of them. I don't know if I ever will. What I do know is I will continue to tell the stories of those connected to the top of one coin and connect the dots. I suspect the dots lead to places we wish they did not. Next up in my notorious series is Johan Parilla. I know I screwed that name up, who allegedly was the top earner under the Steinkiller brothers and brought in some $4 million a month by January of 2016. So what do you think of the story so far? Did you see the video about Igor? What do you think about the Steinkiller brothers? Do you think that all of this is as calculated as I do? I want to know your thoughts and opinions. And if you were taken by one coin, I want to know about your story. Were you connected to any of these people? Were they in your upline, your uplines, upline, your up, up, up? I mean, you know, on and on up the pyramid, so to speak. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for spending time with me. I look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, you're beautiful and I love you.